and welcome everybody here in Twitch chat and everybody on YouTube who's watching this video later on. Okay, you coming up here? For some Orzhov Vampires, we have a donation to play some Vampires here. Um, as y'all know, Orzhov Vampires is probably the, the very best deck in the format right now. Okay, just like sitting here looking at me. Are you coming up here or not? Anyway, the this the thing that's a little bit of a special take on this Orza Vampires deck is that we're playing Bloodthirsty Aerialists. The viewer that donated for this has said that they've put Bloodthirsty Aerialist in this uh, deck instead of like the two one uh, one drop. So cut a one drop for it, and said that they've really liked this Aerialist being in here. There you go. Um, Aerialist works really really well with Sanctum Seeker. These two are definitely a combo. Um, each one that you attack with, you get to gain a life. So each each one of those individual triggers puts counters on the aerialist there. Besides that, it, it's pretty, you know, we got a pretty stock deck here um, besides just having the aerialist in here. Um, so yeah, I, you know, I'm interested to see if it actually works out. If, you know, like if we have enough uh, mana and everything, like, or if we're going to be getting stuck on lands or, you know, if we're going to be like, if our deck's going to be too clunky with too much top end, I don't know. Maybe it will, maybe it won't. We're going to kind of find out. Um, yeah. So let's see how it goes. Orzov Vampires here. Okay. Come on over here. All right. So we're going to go ahead, like we do with always with donation decks, we're going to play in a traditional constructed league. Let's see if we can get that five win dream happening on over here. Yeah, Sky Marcher Aspirant. That's the card that was cut. Because originally it was like, yeah, I cut the Sky Marcher Aspirants for the three drops. And I was like, well, you cut a one drop for three drops. That doesn't sound like a good idea. And then Chaff said, no, it's it's good. Try it. And, and we got our donation deck here, and we're going to be trying it. I... Probably should not have kept this hand. I know, I was just kind of talking. But we have a good amount of mana. Like, we, there's 22 lands in the deck, so we already got five. So, with 17 more lands, we're probably not drawing very many more. So, hopefully, we draw, you know, a good two drop here to fill the curve. You know, take a one drop or a two drop. A horse. Of course that's what they got off of Bond of Flourishing. So we will not be mortifying a horse. Do... Do I want to mortify Land War Elf? Hey, Papa Tim. Thanks for that resub there. So I'm going to go with them playing some other creature that I do get to mortify here. <clears throat> and then me mortify that creature and then untap and Sanctum Seeker. All right, it looks like I guess I'm mortifying Land War Elf. And Hero Shook with the resub as well. And that gets us to... Oh, it looks like I was one, behind one. According to MTG Bot, says that that is sub number 10 on the day. Mm. So I'm going to play that either. So just missed out on playing this Conquistador. Could have had that Conquistador in play. So that's a sub goal. What the sub goals do is each time we hit a sub goal, I count that towards our next 12 hour stream. I do 12 hour streams every time we get 20 total sub goals. 
Uh, so far, we were at 9, and so that is sub-goal number 10. So we are halfway to a 12-hour stream now. That, which cannot protect itself. What's up, Zeus? Zeus the, the Great with that resub. Thank you, Zeus. I oh, QR is nice here, untapping that Vine Mare. Pretty nice. Love to make a splash. So three. So Ariel should just be able to kill Nissa, right? Because in three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, I mean it's gonna be seven power. I'm just sending with everything, flipping the landing, because Landing, flipping landing means that we get to make chump blockers for Vine Mare. Oh, so it's just six. It wasn't seven. But yeah, it's still killing Nissa. It's seven now. Because, oh, Conquistador is just they lose a life. It's not you gain a life also. I was thinking the Conquistador trigger. I counted that. Yeah, this aerialist is pretty awesome. What? Um, I guess we have to chump here or trade there. Um, hmm. They're saying good game. Like the game's over. The game doesn't seem over though. They have to have something else to kill me. I can still survive this. That thing doesn't have trample, right? No. This game's not over. How many lands are in our deck? There's 22. I I don't get to kill Kiora though. <clears throat> all right, well that's game. Because we couldn't draw a spell the last few turns. Behold nature's true power. Together, yeah, we will I guess land is not the problem. We've drawn half of our lands, almost, almost half our lands, and fourteen cards. It was lethal if they attacked with Llanowar Elves. 
doesn't really matter. We can't. We don't have any draw step that we can win from here. That death touch on God Eternal Ronus, but we have to block Ronus. The ocean surges light. Oh, now you come Vanguard. Could have been taking a lot less damage have you just sit there and block the Vine Mare a long time ago. So we definitely want these to sparks from the stuff that we saw. Noxious Grasp feels like it's an above average card to be playing as well. Okay. Now what are we taking out? I think we're going to take out the cast downs. I don't think we need like infinite removal and just having, you know, like we just up upgraded. So I think that's fine. And then I'm thinking maybe Vanguard. I guess Vanguard does get to block that 5-3, though. No, Ronus does not have Trample, correct. But we we were taking, with the 5 damage, we had to block that. The Vine Mare cannot be blocked by Black Creatures. So we, cannot block black, we cannot block Vine Mare with the Aerialist. So, they, so we had to block Vine Mare with... The one one. We want to take out lieutenants. A couple of those, one vanguard, one conquistador. If we're going to have more removal in our deck and less vampires, then the card that increases the size of your vampires is less valuable. Also, just increasing our 1-1s to 2-2s two and stuff like that against a deck full of creatures that are bigger isn't as valuable as well. So assuming they're going to block the knight, but then they'll take four and we'll grow the knight. I could put the, I could have put the counter on the knight, and then they take three, or like, well then then they like jump block and I don't know. I like I like this option. Turn three Nessa is still good. <laughs> Weak. So we brought in six removal spells that kill. Come on. We brought in six removal spells that kill Nessa. That doesn't mean that we'll draw any of them though.
killing Grazier there doesn't doesn't help me. I don't. It's I was not swinging lethal on the Nissa, so killing Grazier there doesn't help me. Like if I would sacrifice the knight to kill the Grazier, like you're saying, that doesn't doesn't really help me. But y'all are right that the 22 lands doesn't really feel like it's it's too little. So Knight of the Ebon Legion can take out Carnage Tyrant. The Danto Vanguard takes out Vine Mare. Nissa is pretty good. Man, that card's unbelievable. Just kill it just kills you with all these three threes. Let's you have just three lands and cast Carnage Tyrant. What a strange and magnificent world. The land fights for us. So now we have no incentive to attack the Nissa right now. Can't make any more creatures. Just need to sit back and play defense. And wait till we draw something that can help us. Ugh. It's three lands. That's really good with power surges through these lands. That's really good. That's going to blow up my stuff. If 
We had five cards. We tried to compete, try to take out all this stuff with five cards. Wait, what? They put a counter on Blast Zone? What are they doing? Harness the elements. What are they doing? Killing the Knight of the Ebon Legion is the most important card. Now they can't kill Knight of the Ebon Legion. All right, we drew one of our six ways to kill Nissa that we put in the deck. It's a good start. <laughs> yeah, if we drew Kaya's Wrath, just blow up all these lands and everything, that'd be nice. Finally drew a card. So attacking for four there does get another counter on the knight. So now the knight can turn into... Uh, now whenever we pump it, it's a 7-8. So it still covers the Carnage Tyrant. Uh, no, I, I haven't missed Guy March, but we've also had... You know, millions of lands each game, so it's. But no, Sky Marcher Aspirant would not have been as good as Bloodthirsty Aerialist has been. We also haven't won a game, so I can't really say that it's going well. <laughs> we haven't won a game yet. But that's not. hasn't really been Bloodthirsty Aerialist's fault. <laughs> Thanks, Shaf. Thanks for the luck. So, you know, assuming they're going to blow up the aerialist, I think I want to do some more attacking. Here, as you see, like our life totals are basically the same. This knight pressures them a bunch. Well, I guess they get that free block. Okay, well, maybe it wasn't a good attack. That's still fine. It's still a good attack. Because that does, does trigger the knight again. We can take a seven. We can take a hit for seven from the Carnage Tyrant. It's kind of a r rough attack for them. Then we get to swing back with all this stuff.
Because if we do attack with everything, then with double triggers, we're doing two, four, six, eight, enough triggers to appreciate the damage dealt. Now, but Aerialist is amazing with Sanctum Seeker. Yeah, that was like the best draw. Just the games, when we don't have Sanctum Seeker, how is this Aerialist doing? But yeah, Aerialist is so great with Sanctum Seeker. I mean, it kind of feels like Sanctum Seeker should be a four of in this deck. I don't know exactly how you fit four in there. Exactly. Um... So I'm not going to pay four life to put a counter on the knight. I know we could do that. Gargos. Man, that card looks so vicious. What? I forgot about that card. What is that? What is that magenta... Are y'all are seeing a magenta rectangle here? Yeah, I know Soren and Landing can, can pump the Aerialist a little bit, but Soren's good. Landing is not as good as reliable source there. Do they have a way to... What? Why would they make this attack? We see in like rabbit bite from them. But no, rabbit bite doesn't matter. Uh, you'll be playing some random instant speed pump spell that's going to kill me. I still don't want to respect a random instant speed pump spell. Let's play this champion. Draw some cards. <laughs> That'd be the worst decision. It's like, oh, champion. Draw, draw, draw. So I could go Legion's End against Nyssa and just exile all their stupid forests that are creatures. We could do that. Is that better than Mortify? It kind of doesn't do anything else against the rest of their deck except for Nyssa. Ugh. Adanto Vanguard was amazing. A lot better than a Legion's Lieutenant would be. But I guess I should probably switch those. I'll keep the Mortify. Mortify can be more important. Destroying that. Whatever enchantment, or the Gargos, or the Shifting Ceratops. <laughs> Are y'all keeping this? Knight of the Ebon Legion is pretty strong. Keep, keep on draw. Keep. Mulliganing 
Always feels bad. Let's give this a try. We could. I mean, we could hold up Noxious Grass for this turn five, turn three Nissa. This is a pretty obvious turn three Nissa when our opponent was like, "Good game." All right. So if we mortify, we're only hitting Nissa for three. If we mortify. Hey base, thanks for that Twitch Prime sub. I appreciate that. We'll see if they have the cryptic command. I really hope not. Forgive me. Oh, that's not so bad. That means we get to attack them for four and, f and get a counter on night. Destroy your land, thank you. Free land destruction. Vampire. Still got to deal with the Vine Mayor. Planning on chump blocking the Vine Mayor here, getting a counter on the Aerialist. But still, after that, we have two two turns to try to find something for the Vine Mare. I guess the Noxious Grass gains me one life, so that one life also puts a counter on the Aerialist, too. That's pretty sweet. I guess I should have killed a Llanowar Elf. So they couldn't go get another Vine Mare. Yes! Okay, good. Never mind. We're good. Um, do I even want to play that? I could also just mortify the Grazer, do eight to them, put them down to four, so then the Aerialist kills them. I just want to do that. So 
So I'll put them down to four so that Ariolus kills them. Is that game? I don't know. They said good game. I'll say good game. That will be game. Alright. Good match there. That was a good match. Opponent fought well with the almost all mono green deck. It's a good close bunch of good close games. 1-0. Bloodthirsty Aerialist OP. Even with keeping the two lander there. Our opponent played a very good emote game. They did. They were very good with on their they were on their emote emo game a game there. Moo Yanling. I assist those humbled by the pursuit of knowledge. <laughs> the Shamrock of Luck. The sky is my domain. Combo. I have lost this combo so much. I guess you do. Wow, that is really good. Look how many cars we have in here now. <laughs> you have to subtlety of rocks. I have so many cards. They have three. They have three cards. We have three creatures. And six. Well, now five cards. Quell your temper. I think this vampire tribe may have something going for it. It's on the tribes to watch list. I don't know how much I want to extend out here. They can make a token, but I really don't care about them making a token. Alright, we'll just extend. Are they going to have ritual of set? That's fine. Still have the champion in the first fort. Yeah, I wasn't really expecting my opponent to let me flip landing and then have removal. But like like once we flipped landing. I don't have a rotation proof version of this deck. Um Tomorrow is Rotation Proof Monday, and I do need to make... So I'm going to be making Rotation Proof... More Rotation Proof decks for tomorrow. Our fates thirst for life. 
So I could try to make a vampire one. Yeah, like, maybe, like, is there just not enough vampire stuff? I know Champion of Dusk, and Champion of Dusk and Legion's Lieutenant, those have to be the, the two biggest things that, that the deck's losing. Yeah, I think like losing this in Champion of Dusk really hurts. Oh, no, 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 wrong one. Make yourself There's a bad Vampire Lord in M20. Oh yeah, Sanctum Seeker too. Yeah, if you're playing, yeah, playing the Sanctum Seeker version. I don't, I don't really expect. Th a throne, I mean, Throne of Eldraine could have some vampires, but I could see it being like the next core set, core set 2021, having like some cool vampires because it's a core set, and then in like, and like, like people don't play Soren. And, like, there's no, like, vampires for the next, you know, like, nine months. And then suddenly, like, for the last three months of Standard again, it's like, oh, man, hey, y'all remember Soren? How, like, that was really good, like, a year ago? And, like, suddenly Soren's, like, a deck again. That's what I'm kind of expecting to happen. my opponent doing they're doing some like blue black stuff i guess we played duress against blue black stuff i suppose I don't really know what these cast downs are killing, but I don't know. They were doing some amass things. Maybe cast down kills something. I don't really want Legion's Lieutenant, Legion's Lieutenant, um, against a deck that could have sweepers. I don't don't want the card that's only good when you have other vampires in play. Sanctum Seeker is kind of the same way though, and Bloodthirsty Aerialist also. We're we're kind of. You know, we got we got synergistic cards here. So yeah, there there's probably going to be a, 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 a uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Sp sp sprinkler, sprink. Hmm. A sprinkling, sprinkling is that the word? of vampires in the sets. Sprinkling. This sounds weird. It sounds like that's not the word. There's probably going to be a, a sprinkling of vampires in the next the couple of sets, but I wouldn't expect like vampires to be a dominating deck. Vampire. Defeating you will not bring me pleasure. I know I could minus and put Sanctum Seeker into play, and my life's a little better. Don't try I don't want to extend too much. We're doing okay right, right here. The 
Killing wind. If you wish to surrender now, I must meditate and prepare. Make yourself useful. I cannot you bear to stay. What little trust I had. I shall miss your company. All right, they got their five cards. Vanguard down. Flock of vampires. A roost. That is not a good card against vampires. I've basically been on autopilot this whole game, just kind of taking decision, choosing decisions at random, to be honest. Soren is just so good, just like any of the decisions. See, like, you know, I I did the plus, the first plus one, then the second plus one, then the minus three. Just does it like. It's just so good. All the decisions are good. It doesn't really matter. Cry, Lazo Tup plating, and drawn from dreams. We'll take the good card. Pretty easy one. Our fiends thirst for we'll say Cry doesn't kill any of our stuff. That's why I like the deck. Don't have to think too much or make many of my own decisions. Yeah, you just you can just dartboard it. Like all of these, all these will be great. Which one do we want to do? Let's do this one. House Markov grew stronger. That card is really good. All right, 2-0. Oh, really? You never thought about boarding out Legion's Lieutenant? You just thought, oh, it's a lord, it stays in there? Yeah, that's that's a good one to board out against removal heavy decks. So yeah, glad I can help with the insight there. I I can understand that, you know, looking at it, you know, thinking that's the vampire card, that stays in. That's kind of a tricky card to sideboard out.
be a good time for a Plague Mare. Do we got any Plague Mares in the sideboard? Should we get some Plague Mares in the sideboard? So I'm paying for life here so they don't really get to attack. Having uh, Vanguard is not a card I really like in this matchup, but having it in play does make my Sanctum Seeker better. I think I want to actually use removal here instead of playing Bloodthirsty Aerialist. I kind of want to be able to play Bloodthirsty Aerialist and trigger it immediately so it doesn't die to a 3 damage burn spell. Yay. We're at lucky 13 now. Yeah, no, the, the Aerialist has definitely been better than Sky than Duskborn Sky Marcher. That is a certainty. So if I attack with Sanctum Seeker, they can block and strike the Sanctum Seeker. If I don't attack, they could just strike Aerialist. Yay, they didn't either. Mm, all right, see ya. Hmm, they just played nothing. Four mana, just did nothing with it. With four cards in hand. Last turn. That's a good card. Triggers. Triggers. So, like, let's say they would, if they would have blocked with Viachino Pyromancer here, like representing another Shock and or Shivan Fire. After blocks, I was going to mortify the Pyromancer before damage. I didn't really want to give them the opportunity to, uh, you know, block with either of these and get damage on and then, like, Wizard's Lightning or anything. I, I wanted to, like, attack and make them make blocks where, you know, maybe they thought they could get damage in and then still mortify. I didn't really care if the Sanctum Seeker got through or not. You know, like, I, I could have mortified the 2-1, but then if they would have responded by, like, first, before attacking, they were responded by Wither's Lightning, the 3-4, I don't get to attack. And even though that's, like, a, a good trade for me, we're really, how ahead we were, we were really at the point that I just wanted to attack with both of them. The Legion's End will enter here, take out the Vanguards, and bring in a Duress. Let's bring in another Duress over a Legion's Landing also. That looks good enough to me. Mm -hmm. 
Now we're getting some faster games here. We had a couple of long ones there against the green deck. 8,400 YouTube sub hype. That is awesome. If y'all are not following the YouTube channel, head on over there. Follow along for all the updates. There's the link, youtube.com slash ToddStevensMTG. Uh, this is probably too slow. I like having four lands and three spells. Not exactly the best three spells, though, to have. Oh, we get to go first? That's nice. I don't think the, the middle of next month. I think I've been getting like around like 1,400 subscri new subscribers a month, or at least the last month has been like 1,400. I think that was like the last number I saw when I looked at my YouTube numbers. So I think we're like a, like maybe like the middle of the month after next for the 10,000. Nine twenty one. It probably also doesn't doesn't take into account though. It's this is a, a time where um, everything's kind of slowing down as we get closer to rotation. You know, there's just a little bit, a little bit less people interested each day in Magic until rotation, which is natural. Yeah, Demir Control went 4 It was sad. But it happened. But, yep, we just lost all of our, our matches. Depart Innistrad immediately. Or you will taste my blade. Burning Sun's Avatar. That card's cool. This is but a taste of my power. The Soren's gonna die after this, but that's okay. Doesn't really need to continue to stay alive. I don't know if that was the best block. I was thinking it was maybe gonna die because the five five killing it, but now actually come to think of it, they kinda just had to block that thing. Yeah, vampires can wreck up on some some decks like that. <laughs> nah, I don't think our opponent could have hit us for 23 in a turn. Okay, we're 3-0. See if we can finish off a 5 0 with vamps. <laughs> Thanks for the luck there, Shaft. And pretty good opening hand here, too. I think I'm going to get rid of the conquista Conquistador, though. We'll just go Knight, Lieutenant, Lieutenant. Cast down something. I don't know if I've seen this matchup too much. I 
There we go. <laughs> How can we get rid of the Conquistador? How can we conquer now? How can we conquer? That card's just so good. Just making all their stuff cost one less. It's just so good. You know, it, they could just have like a whole like a bunch of like seven sixes and four fives and things like that that I wish I would have saved the cast down. I don't know. That card's just it's just so good. I really I enjoy watching Todd play fun donation decks, but nothing makes me happier. <laughs> watching him crush face cry uh crush face with tier one decks. Yeah, playing tier one decks definitely makes it easier, that's for sure. Point, click. Play, you know, play the removal spells, attack with the creatures. Life's not too hard. I don't know if I have a, a favorite deck right now, honestly. I don't really have a favorite deck. All right, so we'll just activate this thing. Put them down to three. We draw a sword and they die. Um, you know, both of these attackers will be lethal. They have to, like, sit back on defense, like, forever. Yeah, I do think elementals will be good after rotation. All right, so much for the whole they have to be on defense forever part of my story that I just had. Yeah, they got two blockers there. Am I dead? I might, I might be dead. Am I dead? No, Galta doesn't kill me, does it? Like, Galta plus something else kills me? Maybe I shouldn't activate that knight. I have to have something else also, though. Yay, they didn't have something else. I was actually pretty dead, though, wasn't I? Yeah, if they just attack out. No, I guess I guess the Knight of the Ebon Legion stays alive and can kill them. Oh yeah, they had the yeah their Dino had reach. Right. All right, bringing in a whole lot of removal. I mean, honestly, Legion's End is just great in this matchup too. All these, all these removal spells are very good. Yeah, like all those removal spells are very good. I want to take out Legion's Landing. Being one power, pretty slow. And then we'll take out Lieutenant. And then some top end. Maybe like... I want to take out some of this top end. I think it's just Lieutenant. Yeah, actually, this is fine. This is fine. Because Champion can still tussle with some of those dinos, so I don't really want to take out Champion. Everybody, anybody have suggestions on for DEFCON for the Dominaria event here? 
So this John Dinosaur deck doesn't lose anything. I do think John I think John Dinos is a is maybe like the best choice, honestly. I didn't play it though. I played in a Johnny deck for Hawkeye. And then Hawkeye just laid on the couch all day, and then I lost all my matches. And I was like, thanks, Hawkeye. Marauding Erupta. And that's why we have Legion's End. They're, they're two mana... They're two mana dino... Or they're just their two mana red creatures. I guess they're not both dinos. But their two mana red creatures are really important. That one and that one. Those two. And so... <clears throat> so I like Legion's End in this matchup. They have three lands right now. That's destroying a land. They may not have another land, so they may not be able to play Ripjaw Raptor. But if I don't destroy that, if I would have played Vanguard, they would have been able to play Raptor plus Savage Stomp. See, we're, we're just the Delver deck here. We just play our, our one-drop threat and then just, you know, play removal all day. And kill our opponent. You are fortunate I have not that it calls to your soul. It's just a Delver deck. <laughs> yeah, everything went wrong with Demir. Alright, that is the one card I have a hole against here with these removal spells. That was not good. Guess I should have played another creature. Still like where we're at though. Knight of the Ebon Legion. Still just trades for it. All right, Vanguard, just kind of do your thing. What's up, Cast Down? Hooray! 
So what my all right? Let's say let's say we don't draw a castle. Let's say we just draw like a land. There, my plan is to attack. My I'm still gonna attack with the the creature that trades with the eight seven. And uh, if they don't block, they just take it. You know, I get to pump once and you know do half of their life total. But I was gonna leave leave a Danto Vanguard back to block, where I'm only taking four on the block, and like we win that race. So either way, you know, like basically, whatever we're doing, we're kind of forcing that 8-7 into combat somehow. Like I wasn't going to attack with both or leave both to block. You know, kind of make it awkward on the dinosaur no matter which way they chose. Yeah, Slay the Spire is awesome. Yeah, Boot showed me that one when he was over a couple of months ago. That's a really fun game. This is the final boss. Wow. This used to be a final boss stream. Here we go. Y'all didn't get your final boss emotes in the chat. I'm blaming y'all. All right, now our playlist is going. We're facing the dinosaurs again. Our hand is not nearly as good against dinosaurs here for this game, though. Don't have, like, a bunch of removal. <laughs> Thanks, Frankler. You watched for all 13 and a half hours yesterday. Awesome. I've been a little off my game today, admittedly since then. But we're holding up. We're doing we're doing pretty well. Our plan is playing Aerialist here, and the next turn Soren drop Sanctum Seeker, attack with Aerialist, trigger it some. Don't really know how we don't die, but that's the plan. We probably die. What? Do they have like shocks in their deck or something? Like, what stops this very obvious block? Or even more obvious block? Are they playing like shocks or. Like they shock the aerialist? Colossus. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, Colossus. Colossus just kills Aerialist anyway, though. I guess it just kills Aerialist and doesn't do a whole bunch of damage to me. We'll leave these things back to block for Soren. Join my crusade. No, so like yeah, like next next weekend I was gonna take a couple days I was gonna take Friday, Saturday off next weekend. Boot's gonna be in town. Come for you one day. 
Yeah, they have better hands than us. We have all these Adanto vanguards. They look pretty bad. That card always just looks bad whenever you're behind, though. So I liked how we sideboarded last time. What do we do? We took out Landing, Lieutenant, and one Aerialist, I think. Yeah. I'm bringing in nine good removal spells. I'm just turn into the Delver deck, try to get like a couple of cheap threats out first, and then kill their stuff. All right, Shaft, thanks for the luck. Here we go. Game number two. The lucky bits. So I, like my opponent doesn't know exactly what they want to do for sideboarding like I do. Didn't you just play this same matchup opponent? Oh, they didn't? How long does this thing go? It doesn't usually go this long. Like, is it like a minute and a half? Is like is like one thirty like the farthest it can go? I think that's it's like one thirty is the farthest it can go, right? That is awesome, three man. Not really enough removal, but knight's knight's good though. But yeah, I'm doing pretty good. We're hanging in there. I want to draw either removal or third land. You know, preferably third land. There we go. I guess you do. I do have to be worried about. I kind of actually want to say no attacks. Like attacking with both only does one damage. I do have to be worried about like you know like they get to haste their dinosaurs. I know I have the one champion back, but you know, like maybe I need like both. You know like maybe it's like a ripjaw raptor that I want to double block a ripjaw, kind of thing. Gotta destroy a land. To and their way to give their dinos haste here. I'm gonna have this thing back on defense. To 
defend Soren. All right, well, that plus a rip jaw. Worst case scenario, so. That was worst case scenario. So that means my Soren's gonna die? If I, if I Noxious Grasp, then Soren die. I have to Noxious Grasp. I can't let them just draw lots of cards. All right, Soren's dead. I mean, I could chump block with Knight. What are we really doing if we chump block with Knight? Yeah, it's chump block with Knight. This play is not so good against the 7-6, but it's good against everything else. It's still not bad against the 7-6, because I'm like I'm pressuring them, I'll go death touch, lifelink. Like with Sanctum Seeker here, so like That was not a 7-6, so our play was good. I miscounted there. I didn't. I didn't tick up on this thing first because I thought I had lethal. I miscounted because it didn't have the. I thought I had lethal to attack and then sack. But I was. I was one off because it didn't. It wasn't a five five. It was the four four. So I. I missed the life link there. Uh, oh well, they were dead. So that's why I, I immediately like I didn't tick up there. I. I miscounted. Whatever. All right, game three. Can we get it on the draw? <laughs> Thanks, technically. <laughs> it wasn't too too bad of a misplay, though. But yeah. Thanks, Chef. Thanks for that luck. Here we go. One game for the five zero. I uh, just don't, yeah, just don't use that language, Jack Nully. No, I don't really want, well, like, yes, like, Legion's Landing, when it flips, like, it flips into a Danto and can give us a lot of chump blockers, that would be valuable. I just don't really envision us attacking with three creatures kind of thing with, with this deck. So, like, I don't, I don't think that we're going to really be flipping it. So what do I do to not tilt out while playing? See me go through some really rough spots and I never seem flustered. I'm just, I, I don't know if it's, maybe that's just my kind of personality that I just understand that the bad streaks are going to happen and everything. And so I, I just don't, I don't really see, like there's just not really much value in tilting. And so, you know, just breathe and understand that that kind of stuff happens. And I'm just trying and uh, just, you know, look, move forward you know like windshields not rear views and just move on and and try to go get the next one played a lot of magic and lost a lot but of course also won a lot and so played a lot of magic and just you know that's that's kind of my perspective with life and everything I would like more removal. We brought in nine removal spells for a reason. I want more. 
I want one more to kill this Regisaur that's rotting over here. With like one cast down. A Mortify would work. See, you just gotta keep your head up. Sometimes it'll turn around. And you'll get that one more removal spell that you're asking for. Splash. Yeah, I could have waited for discard, but they would have just discarded one of these lands. I don't know. I I liked getting that damage in there. You know, like we're we're being aggressive here. I like just basically I thought that two damage was like that them discarding one of those lands wasn't worth two damage. I prefer the two damage. Because these, these extra lands aren't very valuable. And we saw a couple more lands in their hand. Look at all these vampires killing dinosaurs. That's what we're doing. Killing dinosaurs. Vanguard's the perfect card there to finish out our 5-0. Get that victory theme going. More gold, more gems. Vampires are really good. So, I will have to say that Bloodthirsty Aerialist, pretty impressive. I it was it was definitely better for us than one drop. Um, so yeah, the aerialist did look good. I liked it. I liked the unclaimed territory. I thought I wasn't going to like the unclaimed territory, but I did. It helped us out in some spots with the mana. I was, I wasn't sure I was like going to like that unclaimed territory. Um, so thoughts on changes to the deck. I think the only thing is like, maybe we have too much green removal, but it, it does like it. I really like having all those removal spells against the green decks, but maybe it's too much. Like, maybe we don't have enough for mirror matches kind of thing. Um, I I kind of like the Ashiox. Normally, I wouldn't. But with, like, the new Kethis deck that's popping up that's starting to become popular, Ashiok is great against that Kethis deck. So I kind of like it there. Um, didn't really, I mean, we didn't really struggle with anything, so I, it was nice having all those removal spells, to be honest. I could see going three to spark three Noxious Grasp, like changing that instead of being four and two to being three and three. <clears throat> Reason being... To sparks really good against wilderness reclamation but then also like the <clears throat> one of the things about noxious grass was killing like cavalier thorns like with the the green decks like but i you really want to spark for cavalier thorns not noxious grasp there um like with these these uh popular your rock cavalier thorns all those kind of stuff decks i think i'd rather have to spark the noxious grasp in those matchups, so maybe going three and three there. But yeah, pretty good league here. Yeah, the one life with air yeah, one life with aerialist is nice, but exiling Cavalier of Thorns, which is you know something that could be a, a difficult blocker, is important. But I don't know, maybe Noxious Grass is better. I'm 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 kinda willing to see either way, but at least a spark gets, like I said, wilderness reclamation, which if you know you're playing against Nexus, you're gonna want that. But anyway, that's Orzov Vampires. So if you're watching the video later on on YouTube, hope you liked it. Hope you liked Bloodthirsty Aerialist as well. Let me know in the comments what you think of the flying vampire here. 
But thanks for watching. <clears throat> uh, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button. Also, forgot to say that. Yeah, please do those things. I would appreciate that. But yep, there we go. So thanks for watching Orzhov Vampires, and I will see you for the next video.